All right, guys, we have a 2007 EasyGo TXT. This one here is a gas gas golf cart. It needs a bath, a little bit dirty. Uh, it's been sitting at the customer's site over the winter time outside. You step on the pedal and it does nothing. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is to diagnose this issue. We're gonna check the voltage in the battery. All right, so we're gonna do plus, minus. Oh, you can see the battery's actually dead. I load it up, it drops down to zero volts. And you can see how it's climbing. All right, so that is our first issue. So the first thing we gotta do before we can do anything else on this cart is let it charge. And for you, it's gonna be a few seconds. As for me, it's gonna be a day. Got a new battery, Crown batteries. This is, ugh. this is the brand of battery that I exclusively use across the board which is Crown. And notice this one here has different terminals. This will actually get installed like that. Our negative will be on the same side, positive on the other side. And we're gonna replace those nut and bolt type clamps like this one has. Those are much more expensive batteries, which is the reason why we didn't use that style and went to this one. But we'll put new terminals on for here. So I've been trying these new gloves called Black Advance Nitro Examination Gloves. Whether or not they're designed or purposed for my use, I don't know. But they seem to hold up pretty good, even through like the, the pulling, you know. Oh yeah, hoodie, it's cold out today. All right, we get these terminals disconnected and we'll get the new battery dropped in. Notice that this one does not have a bolt and the tie down bracket is not here, so we can't tie this battery down. I think I have two different size nuts here. Yeah, see these are, this is not the correct nut and bolt setup for this. And we will not be reusing this hardware. There's a couple of issues with this cart we have to straighten out. Okay, so we have our light kit and our battery terminals for the main cart. Let's get this lifted out. It goes down for a core. There's our new battery. We'll lift off our terminal caps. I know it's a brand new battery, but I still like to give them a quick, just to make them nice and shiny. So we're gonna convert over to these terminals. You guys have seen me use these terminals before on many different carts. I'm gonna spread the positive terminal because it's larger than the negative. And see, these jaws open this way, and they open very little. So you always wanna place the terminal in the pliers, or on the pliers, like so, so when you squeeze it, it spreads it. Okay, there's that one, and there's that cart isn't hooked up to the battery yet, so it doesn't matter if you touch the ground or anything with either terminal. Either post doesn't matter. When the wires are hooked up, that's when it matters. Or if you touch, or if you touch both terminals at the same time. Or like if you arc them out like this, you don't want to do that. Nice and snug. I really don't like the fact that this battery's flopping around like this. What I like to do is I'll take these clamps off, remove these bolts, take that plate off, okay, now what I'll do is I will take this terminal, which is plus, and it doesn't matter which way this goes for how we're going to do this. And I'll take this terminal here. And I'll put that on just like so. So I put the the golf cart's terminal wire cable 
between the lead clamp and this steel plate. And then the other side, we'll do the same thing for our light kit. And this way when you tighten it up, you don't start twisting the terminals around and bending them in weird ways. It doesn't matter. See, this has nubs. They could either go up or down. I usually flip them over and make them face down when I'm using this end to crimp a cable, but I, I rarely ever strip a wire back and use these as cable clamps. I just don't like to. And we'll take our ground wire here. I want to clean that a little bit. Use the air die grinder, angle grinder. I wish this was a variable speed, but it's not, so apologize in advance for the noise. Nice and clean. If that was a variable speed angle grinder, die grinder, it wouldn't polisher, whatever the hell you want to call it. It wouldn't be so violent sounding. Okay, so now we can tighten these up. This will give a much better connection versus just putting the bolt through the eyelet and not using that bracket. And this positive one here, I'm actually going to swing it out a little bit because I don't want that cable anywhere near that clutch. Just be careful what you're doing if you do this because you don't want to be swinging a wrench that's connected to the positive terminal and touch the frame or anything. Now we get to see if the cart starts. In neutral. Ooh, look at that. Cool, fired right up. So that's a good sign. Now we can move forward with the next repair. Our next repair is this fuel line siphon tube. Oop. Now that I've spilled gas all over everything. The grommet has ripped and is no good anymore. So we're gonna take this off and we're gonna replace this grommet. I have the part, it's FP205. And this is the siphon tube grommet for the EasyGo TXT 2004 and up and RXV. See, it's just a rubber, a rubber grommet. See, in the fuel line, the siphon tube rather comes up and this elbow, this barbed elbow here fits into the fuel line. So this grommet should, theoretically, I don't know how well this is gonna work, but we're gonna try to slide it down like so. Okay, so we got it off. You could cut it, but why bother? Just rip it off. And then the first thing you wanna do is, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on it to make it lubricated, and then we'll stick it in the gas tank, and then we'll stick the tube into it, and then hook the fuel line back up, and then change the filter. And I'm just using regular clean engine oil, nothing, nothing fancy about this oil here. This customer has been dealing with this for a while. Um, it was just an, a mess. So this will definitely solve that problem. And I'll use the oil on my hands here and just get a little bit on the siphon tube. And when it goes in, it slips right in. And then the pressure of the siphon tube, that barb pushes out the bottom of the grommet and makes it stay in the tank. So it's it's the way it's supposed to be. But use a little bit of lubrication. You gotta use some type of oil or something on there. Um, you could use two cycle oil too. It's not gonna hurt. This little bit of oil will not hurt anything. It'll dilute out really fast. The fuel lines look like they're in good shape. So we can move on now. And since we're done with that, that was the only other repair that it really needed so far. So now we can go move on with the, the service. Cause we're gonna do a full service oil change and filters. The battery is done. We do have to check the charging system to make sure it's functioning properly. 
but we'll, when we get to that, we will. FIL0014. Spark plugs, we're going to use two BPR 2ES. See, these are FR 2A D. See, these have a smaller nut. BPR 2ES will work just fine. It's what I've always used, and all the years I've been doing this, I've never had a problem. They don't look bad. I mean, they actually look good. I'm changing them. Tighten them, you can feel the washer squashing. And then once they Stop, give them a little noogie. You don't want to go too far because if you go too far, you'll strip out the head because it's only aluminum. That's all you need. And we put our plug wires on. Okay. And we're going to check our air filter. Oh, look at that. This is due. Look at that, that's probably the original air filter. You guys can't see that probably, but let's see. That. Yeah, oh. Dirty. Here is a new filter. You see how nice and white that one is. It's not all gray and dirty. Okay. Those are stutter generator belt, nice and tight. Next, we're gonna check the charging system. And that says 11 volts. I don't... I don't think my meter is working correctly. Something don't seem right. It's not registering the load drop. It is possible though, if the meter is working correctly, that we have a faulty voltage regulator. Okay, that's better. 12.7, 12.7, 12.8. 12.78, that's okay, let's see what we have. Point six, we're good. So my meter's getting crappy. Okay, so the meter is good, or that the battery that we know is good. Spray this down. Okay, let's get the oil changed. I know you guys have seen me do this before. And the best thing to do before you drain the oil is to open the valve cover fill port or pull the dipstick out. I usually pull the dipstick. Oh. Holy crap. Okay, there we go. And if you've just run the engine, it will come out of here like a river. Just be aware of that. And make sure you have your drain pan ready. Because when it comes out, it will come out. It will come out fast. And messy if you're not ready for it. I usually push the brake cable back so this way it doesn't, hopefully it doesn't, 
There we go. Ooh, look at that, it's like mud. I'll hold the filter in place just to control the flow of oil. And then as you pull it out, it goes faster. And this is a washable filter. It's a brass mesh filter. This O-ring, you gotta make sure this is in here. If you buy a new filter, you should get a new O-ring. You don't wanna put this filter back without that O-ring, otherwise your oil is just going to pump all over the ground. And you won't get it all out with this method, but you'll get a good portion of it out. The only other way to drain the oil out of this motor is to remove the skid plate to get to the drain plug. Okay, and then do a quick inspection of the filter. See, there's some schmegle there, so we'll wipe it off. That's all you gotta do. That's all I've ever done. I've, I've, I've never had to really go nuts washing this filter off, because it's, it's good, see? Okay, we'll put her back in. Flat side goes down. No. Crap, which way does that go? Flat side goes forward. Okay. Just line the holes up. <laughs> Why did I not remember that? Brain fart? Maybe. A little bit of brain fart for you there. I'm human too. My brain farts. Just gotta be careful when your brain shits its pants. That's when you have real problems. Okay. I usually get them as tight as I can by hand. And then just tight enough, don't go too far, because again it is aluminum and you will strip them out. There we go. And then just clean up your mess. You don't want any dripping oil. That way you don't get any false thinking that you're losing oil anywhere. Okay, there we go. Okay, now let's fill it. Okay, remember we clean this off so we don't get any dirty bits in the oily bits. We got our stupid Napa container. Two quart metal container. About a quart and a half of oil this engine will hold. I know, riveting, isn't it? Watching me pour oil into a motor. We'll take our dipstick. Check our fluid level. We are, I don't know if you can see that, spot on. And because the filter has that mesh, it's not a paper filter like you'd get on like a club car or on the Kawasaki engine that has a spin on oil filter. So it doesn't need to be run up to prime it. It'll just self prime. Okay, let's run it for a moment. <laughs> Engine sounds good. It smells a little rich, so it's probably, sounds like it's burning a little bit of oil too. It's probably wore out. But that's the way it goes with these things. You use them a lot, they wear out faster. So I'm trying to check the lights and look at it. Pull knob doesn't want to come out. All right, time to change that. I think I have those in stock. All right, so we're basically done under the seat here. Everything is done, air filter, battery's good, charging system's working, new battery terminals, new spark plugs, new fuel filter, belts are good, so we don't have to worry about those. Tire pressure's already good, brakes work, everything's greased. All right, so how I typically would do this is I'd get in here with a screwdriver. Yeah, see, that one's already separated. And just kind of push on the panel. You don't have to be rough with it, it'll usually pop right out. 
ACC0002. Okay, so, oh great. We're gonna actually unplug, oh look at that, the whole back of the switch came off. <laughs> bing, bing. Okay, so we're gonna unplug that. I'm going to plug this in. Plug this in. Okay, so it looks like the lights, I can see them both. There's no turn signals on this, so you don't have to worry about those. The headlights are both working. Let's get this all separated here. Then we're gonna have to fight with this one to get it off. Whew, that is on there. Okay, so let's see if I can grab onto something here. Nope, there's nothing to grab onto, it's all... No, it won't let me grab onto anything. See if I can grab onto this stuff. Is that working? Can't quite tell. Can... Well, that worked. Considering... Yeah, here's the back of the switch. It just fell apart. It's it's just so rusted. There's nothing we could really do, so we had to change it. All right, we'll get the new switch installed. Sometimes you just have to use some brute force to get them apart. It's the only way. Sometimes. Okay. Nice and firm. Let's work. Lock washer, well, sorry, excuse for a lock washer. And then we put the knurled nut on there. It's more or less a, a beauty thing. It doesn't really serve any real purpose, I guess. And then we tighten that, there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is take the headlight switch knob off so that I can replace the cup holder. There we go. I think that's been off a couple of times in its life. That way we don't damage the switch. There we go. Job done. I typically like to leave the parts for the customer so they can see that I've changed them and the problem that was there. All right, guys, that concludes this one. The cart's done, everything works. The only thing left to do is I did tell the customer I would wash the cart for her, so that way it's nice and clean because it was sitting outside all winter, and I'm sure she'll appreciate it. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you like the videos, please hit the thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. And click the bell notification next to subscribe so that way you're notified anytime I upload a video. Don't forget to check the links down in the video's description down there for all the products that I use or at least most of the products like gloves. And you can also check out my social media links and my website and Patreon page down below. All right guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. We will see you in the next video.